Never before had Kenya been humbled into literally begging for money to buy food to feed her citizens. Death stared 10,000 Kenyans in the face due to severe starvation, forcing the president, prime minister and the cabinet to make an international appeal for money to save the hunger-stricken people. That was just before the irritating power rationing program began. Waters at the country's main dams had dropped below levels that could provide enough hydroelectric power. And as if the power rationing was not enough, residents in major towns had to bear with another water rationing program. It is such grim situations as intolerable hunger pangs, power rationing and water rationing that finally struck the conscience of the nation that it needed to protect and restore her water towers. Wasu wasije waka complicate hii mambo ati kwa sababu ni climate change. Inaonekana kama ni mnyama mkubwa amekuja kula watu katika Kenya. Hapana iko na muna hiyo ni uko sefu wa miti. The Mao Forest Complex, which is Kenya's biggest water tower, became the center of interest. Out of its 400,000 hectares of thick forest cover, 100,000 hectares had been shaved bare through illegal logging, charcoal burning, farming and settlement. Evidently, the weather patterns have changed. Residents in Narok have witnessed giant rivers like the Mara and Wasongiro almost become seasonal, and others disappearing altogether. All this because of the wanton destruction of the Mao Forest Complex. Already the signs are there globally, whether they are floods, whether they are long droughts. We are going to see extreme weather, weather conditions are impacting on the economy, impacting on the social economics, impacting on security. And so the campaign to save the Mao Forest Complex began in earnest. Evictions of the squatters began, but it wasn't long before the campaign to save the forest took a political twist, a twist that led to what seems to be a fallout in the ODM party. Sasa wengine wanaijingiza kule, wanakwenda kutawa ili machozi ya mamba. Machozi ya mamba. Crocodile tears. Atiyo pa 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 pa. Na wei mwenyewe likuwa pale sa ili mbewa muzi na fanyo. Sababu tulichagua prime minister na maanza kutawa kiboko kutuchapa. Lakini tukasema tunakuja kumsamea leo. Relax and the table. Drama started in May this year when the Prime Minister read a list of shame of high-profile personalities claimed to own endless tracts of land in the forest. The hot issue threatening to tear the very fabric of ODM is the compensation of the evictees. Rift Valley MPs want all settlers compensated. They must clean up their mess. And as the Mao Forest Complex rapidly transformed into a political battleground, cracks in the cabinet started to run deeper and deeper as the year advanced. New political realignment seemed to be taking shape along the lines of sympathizers and non-sympathizers of the Mao evictees. If you're not here, you're not the future. <laughs> But at the very tail end of the year, the Prime Minister dropped another bombshell. The politics of Mbuta and Omena overshadowed all else.